you stop by today because today I'm going to be starting up on some more Ark Survival Evolved creatures. I've had a lot of you guys actually ask for more of them so today I'm going to be making a Jerboa. I thought it'd be something cute to start off with and then maybe we can do the Rock Drake. I know I've had a ton of you guys asking for that so I'm going to be trying to do that soon as well. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing that we're going to do to make our jerboa is work on the clay pieces. So I'm going to start on the head and then move on to the feet. Now the head is going to be quite large, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be building it off of and later putting it back on a foam ball. So under this lump of tin foil we have a foam ball and then I glued another lump of tin foil onto it for the snout. So I'm going to start building up my clay on top of this and of course since foam can't be put in the oven it'll melt. You need to make sure after you're done sculpting your head to pop it off and then you can glue it back on after it's done baking. So again I'm going to start laying out my clay on top of this. I'm going to make sure to smooth everything out and try to get a basic shape for the head. Once I have a basic layout for the face, I'm going to add the eyes and start building up the clay around them. And the eyes that I'm using I made out of resin. I have a whole video on making them and I think I used these recently like two weeks ago when I did the unicorn. And you'll notice in that video that the pair that I used in that had a white spot. And I had a lot of you guys actually recommend to not add the white spot onto the eye, instead use the natural reflectiveness of the eye. So I ended up trying that out with these eyes and I think it looks really good. I think the white spot looks good if you're going to do something more cartoonsy, but since we're kind of trying to do something more realistic, using the natural reflectiveness of the eye I think works really well and I'm glad you guys pointed that out. Anyways, after I put the eyes into place and I added the eyelids, I started working on the nose and the mouth. Now with the nose of the Jerboa, at first I thought it was going to look a lot more like a fox nose, but looking at my references and everything, it kind of looks like there's a hint of like a mouse quality to it. So I made sure to follow my references as best I could instead of using just what I thought the Jerboa looked like. Um, I'm really glad I decided to go back and double check the references to make sure I got the features right because I probably would have made the nose a lot more angular and kind of more pointed. And then for making the mouth, I took two balls of clay roughly about the same size. I tried to get them as even as possible, and I pushed them onto the front of the snout. These are going to be the top lips, and then the bottom lip is going to be another ball of clay kind of positioned in between these. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the face right now. You're probably wondering why the rest of the face isn't getting any fur texture right now, and that's because we're gonna add fake fur later over the top of this, so I don't really need any other details to it. I mainly just wanted to focus around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and we're gonna end up covering the rest of the face. And so again, we're done with the clay face. I'm gonna pop it off of the foam ball, make sure to be very careful, and then I'm gonna put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 minutes. Okay, so while our clay head is baking, I'm going to start working on the hands and feet. So for both of these, I made a very simple wire frame. I've got two for the hands and two for the feet. So I'm going to start on the hands first, and then we'll move on to making the feet. Now every time I make my clay feet, I make sure to add a little bit of support to the very middle. So I cover up the portion where all the wires are combined, and I make sure to get that nice and blended and kind of just smooshed together, because we are going to do a pre-bake. So I'm going to cover that up, and then I'm going to add the claws to the tips of the wires. And then we're going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for just about 25 minutes. This is going to help make sure that we don't bump our claws while we're working on the rest of the feet, and it's going to help hold the wire frame together a bit more. After that we can start covering up the wire frame. So I'm going to start with the bottom of the wire frame and I'm going to make some strips of clay and just kind of lay them over the wires. We're going to make sure to blend this in and then the tips of the toes I want to be a little fatter than the rest of the toes. So I'm going to add some balls of clay and blend those into the strips. 
After that, I decided that I needed to add a little bit more clay to the bottom portion of the hand, so I kind of made the wrist a little longer. I blended everything in, and then I cleaned up the edges to where we're gonna connect the fabric for the leg later when we put everything together. Now normally once I have the bottoms of the feet done, I end up baking for another 25 minutes to save my progress. You're still welcome to do this, but I'm going to try and skip that step because the tops of the feet are nice and smooth. They don't really have a whole lot of texture to them, and then any portion that isn't nice and smooth, I'm going to end up furring anyways. So I don't need to add a whole lot of detail to it, so I'm just going to add a little bit of strips of clay and then blend this into the rest and remove any excess clay that I need. And then once that's done, I'm going to add a little bit of texture to the bottoms of the feet and then I'm going to put these in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for roughly about probably 35-45 minutes. Now the back feet of the Jerboa are actually quite different from the front feet. They're a lot longer and they have less digits. But we are basically going to be doing the same thing. We're just going to need a lot more clay. So I'm going to cover up that portion where all the wires combine and we're going to add the claws and then do a pre-bake just like with the front feet. And then after that, we're going to start adding clay to the bottoms of the feet and the backs of the feet. Now, one thing that I need to keep in mind while making the back feet is I actually need to make them as heavy as I can because I need them to counteract the weight of his head. Because he's actually quite tall and his head's going to end up weighing a decent amount all the way up there, so I need his feet to be heavy enough to kind of balance him out. So normally when I make my clay pieces, I try to make them as light as possible, but when it comes to making the creature stand up, that's kind of more important. So usually I have to add weight to certain areas to help with the standing up. Because obviously we want our Jaboa to stand, we don't want him to just be squatting there. I mean, either way he's going to look adorable, but I still want him to stand up. After I have that in place, I'm going to flip the foot over and start working on the top of the foot. And so right now with the shape of our foot, we kind of have him kind of flat footed. So we need to add a decent amount of clay right where all the wires connect and where it starts going upwards. So we're going to add a lump of clay there and then we're going to start adding strips of clay to cover up the rest of the foot. We're going to blend all of this together. We can add a texture if we want and then I'm going to clean up the edge at the very top where we're going to connect it to the legs later. After I get both of the back feet done, I'm going to put these in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45-55 minutes. And then once all of our clay pieces are out of the oven and have cooled to touch, we can start on the painting. So I'm going to start on the painting for the face first. I've already taken it and I've glued it back onto the foam ball so it's easier to hold on to. And I'm going to start painting around the eyes. Now technically all the face does not need to be painted, but I'm just going to go over everything because then I can help lay out where the markings for the face are going to go. That way I have a rough guide for when I add the fur to it later. Now around the eyes and the muzzle, those areas are definitely going to need to be painted. So if you don't want to do the whole face, you're welcome to just do the muzzle and the eyes because those areas are going to be furred with fur trimmings and sometimes they're a little bit uh, sheer and you'll see the color of the clay underneath. So it always helps to kind of paint that area first before you add your fur on top. So after I've darkened around the eyes, I'm going to start adding some khaki colors and just kind of primering the rest of the face. And then I'm going to slowly add different types of browns and stuff to the face where I think I'm going to need it later for when we fur. Now for the nose and mouth, I'm going to take my black and I'm going to go inside the nostril holes and around the crease of the mouth and get those nice and darkened up for a shadow. And then for the outside portion of the nose, I'm going to use kind of a really dark gray, and then we're going to add some browns to it as well. And then lastly, I'm going to add some white highlights around the eyes where I want it to go. Now we might end up getting this covered up with fur later, but it's okay. I just kind of want a rough idea where I want everything. So if we get it covered up, we'll just repaint it. And that's pretty much all the painting for the face right now. I'm going to let all the painting for it dry, and then I'm going to mix up a small amount of resin. I'm only going to go over certain spots of the face, because I don't want the whole face resined, because again, we're adding fur to it. So I'm going to go around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and then everything else is going to be left alone. And then for painting the feet, we're basically going to be doing the same thing for all four of the feet. We're going to primer them with the same color that we primered the face, we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to gradually add darker browns and stuff to the tops of the feet.
Also, if you want, you can add a bit of a white highlight to the bottoms of the feet just to brighten them up a little bit. After I did the highlights to the bottoms of the feet, I decided that I kind of wanted to lightly wash over the tops of the feet just to kind of mute out the colors a little bit because they were a bit too bright. And then lastly, I took a black paint and I went over all the claws. And like I said, the front feet were painted exactly the same way as the back feet. They're just shaped differently, so the colors are going to be slightly adjusted to make up for the different shape of feet. Now like the head, we are going to be resining these, but I'm going to go over the whole surface because I'm not quite sure where I want the fur to be added, so I'm just going to go over the whole foot with resin. Now our resin has to cure about 24 to 48 hours, so we're going to set everything off to the side somewhere to dry, and then once that's done, we can start putting everything together. So while those pieces are curing, we are going to start working on the sewing for the body. Okay, so for sewing the body, I drew and cut out all my different pattern pieces, and we're going to use this to cut the fur fabric. So we have the side pieces for the body, we have all the pieces for the legs, we have pieces for the ears, and we also have the tail. Okay, so these are all the different pieces that we need for the sides of the body. I decided to keep the stripes connected so we didn't have to sew down the back of the creature. So when we close everything up, we're going to be sewing the belly closed instead of the back. So basically how everything is laid out, we just need to sew everything together. Once you have everything sewn together, your piece is going to look something like this, and then we can flip it over and see how our patterns are looking. Now we're going to work on sewing the tail. So the tail is just a long strip of fabric, and then the end of it I want it to be gray to go along with the stripes. So we're going to sew the end of the tail to the end of the strip of fabric, and then we're going to fold this over and sew everything down the side and flip it right side out and stuff it. And then for the legs, I have the front legs, the back legs, and we have the inside pieces for all of them and the outside pieces for all of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich the pieces together and sew down the fronts of all the legs. We're leaving the back open so when we add them to the body, they're easier to stuff. And then for the ears, we're going to be using the same fur fabric that we've been using for the body, and then I have a shorter, more plush khaki for the inside of the ears. So we're just going to sandwich these together and sew all the way around, leaving the base of it open so we can flip it right side out. And these are not going to get stuffed, they're going to have a wire frame added to them, and then I also added some sheets of cardboard to thicken them up so they'd have a bit more shape to them. Okay, so we have all the pieces for our jerboa ready, all of our clay pieces have finished curing, and now we can start putting it together. So I have a very simple wire frame that I made ahead of time, and we're going to start putting everything onto the wire frame. We're going to start with the piece of fabric for the body, and we're going to cut some holes for the wires for the legs to go through, and we're just going to slide it right over the wire frame. Then we can take our clay head, and I'm going to use a pair of pliers to make a hole in the foam ball, and then we're going to insert our wire frame for the neck into the back of the foam ball and add a bit of glue. We're going to let that dry, and then we can start gluing the fabric for the neck around the bottom of the foam ball for the neck. After that, we're going to slide the fabric for the tail over the wire for the tail, and then we can start stuffing and closing everything up. After we have the body closed up, I'm going to take pieces of fabric that I've cut to fit onto the foam ball and we're going to start covering that in the fabric. So I'm just going to be gluing pieces of fur fabric to the foam ball. The bottom portion I'm going to match the color for the belly and then the back portion of the head is going to be the same color as the back of the jerboa. I'm then going to take the ears for the jerboa and we're going to add those to the foam ball. So I'm going to take those wires that I added to the ears and I'm going to push them into the foam ball and then I'm going to glue the fabric for the ears onto the surface of the foam ball to hold everything into place. After I let the ears dry into place, I added a little bit more fur fabric to the foam ball just to cover up the rest of the foam. Now I'm going to wait on furring the face because I want to do that last, so what we're going to do now is add the legs to the body. Now you'll notice that our body is a little too fluffy right now, so what I'm going to do before we add the legs is I'm going to shave the sides down so it's easier to access the actual fabric backing of the fur fabric. So when we sew on the legs it's going to be a lot easier and we won't have like uh, knotted up fur around the base of the legs. Because if you leave the fur too long when you sew on the legs you could get it in the way and it's just kind of harder to deal with the longer fur fabric when you're sewing. So I'm going to take my hair trimmer and I'm just going to go down the sides of the jerboa. 
and while I'm at it I'm also going to be shaving the length of the tail leaving the very tip of it still nice and long I just want to thin out the body of the tail I'm also going to be shaving the back of the ears just a little bit to shape them Okay, so I'm going to take the fabric for the back legs first, and we're going to start sewing those into place. So the inside portion of the leg is going to go on the inside portion of the belly, kind of underneath the wire, and then we're going to take the other portion of the leg and we're going to sew it over the wire. So we're basically kind of closing it up around that wire for the leg. Now when you're working with shorter fabrics, you can sew in little guidelines to mark where you want the legs to be sewn so you can keep everything even, but with the fur fabric it's kind of nearly impossible to do that, so you just have to go really slow to try and make sure that you get the legs sewn into place evenly. After I have that fabric sewn into place, I'm going to take the clay legs for the back legs and I'm going to add those to the wire frame. So I'm going to take a thinner gauge wire and I'm going to wrap those onto the wire frame and then I can take the fabric for the legs and glue them around the base of the clay legs. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then we need to stuff these and close them up. After we get the back legs done, we're going to be doing the same thing for the front legs. We're going to sew the fabric into place around the wires for them, we're going to add the clay legs to the wire frame, and we're going to glue the fabric for the legs around the base of the foot, let that dry, stuff, and close it up. After I have all four of the legs all finished, I'm going to take my hair trimmer and just lightly shave over them to adjust the shape of them, just to kind of sculpt the body a bit more because he's a little too fluffy and his body needs to be shaped a bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fur the fronts of the legs. So I'm just going to kind of lightly go over it. I don't want to cover the whole foot. So I'm going to take a little bit of fabric glue and I'm going to paint it onto the surface. And then I'm going to take my fur trimmings and I'm going to sprinkle and kind of push them into place. I'm going to brush away any fur that isn't stuck to the glue. Make sure I like the shape of the fur and where it is. And then I'm going to let it dry. We're going to let our legs dry because we don't want to worry about bumping them and then once they're done we can start working on finishing up the face. So the face needs to be furred as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try my best to cover most of it with cut pieces to fit the face. But once we get closer to around the eyes and the snout, we're going to have to do the same thing that we did with the legs and we're going to apply some glue and sprinkle fur trimmings over it. So I'm going to start with the cutout pieces of fabric and I'm going to glue those into place. Then I'm going to go over that with my hair trimmer and trim them up because I don't need them this long. He kind of looks like a terrier right now. So I'm going to cut his hair a little bit around his face and then we can start adding the fur trimmings around the rest of the face that isn't covered. We're going to have to let our glue dry, but once our glue has dried, we can start painting the face. So I'm just going to kind of go around the eyes and darken everything up and start adding some more browns and highlights and just kind of messing around until I get the right look. Because he is cute right now, but we need to get those natural colors into the face right now. I know I used the same color for the belly for the face because I wanted his face to be a bit brighter, but his face fur is really too fake looking right now. We need to add some other tones to it to make it look more natural. And then after we're done painting the face, we're going to take our paints and start painting the inside portions of the ears. So I'm going to take kind of a muddy gray and I'm going to start with that on the inside portions working outwards. And then I'm going to switch to more of a pinkish color. And I'm going to try and blend these outwards into the khaki color of the ear. Now I'm not covering the whole portion of the inside of the ear, just kind of more the inner portion and I'm blending it into the color of the fabric. Jerboa. I had so much fun with this project. I can't wait to work on some more Ark Survival Evolved creatures along with more dinosaurs. They may not be Ark Survival themed, but they are going to be dinosaurs, which will be fun anyways. Anyways, I'm going to have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop, so check the links down below if you want to buy anything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!